Good morning. So good to be with you this morning. Ko Belmont toku maunga, uh, ko hat toku awa, uh, ko loa hat toku takiwa, uh, ko manawatu toku rohe, uh, ko Mangari Baptist toku fare karakia, uh, ko Amy uh, toku wahine, uh, ko Ben Mai toku ingoa. Uh, tina koto, tina koto, tina tato katoa. Yeah, hey, so good to be with you this morning, and um, wow, wow, that was an awesome um, display of uh, the biblical story of uh, the parable of the Good Samaritan, and um, yeah, we're going to be talking about that a little bit this morning and exploring that a little bit as we go along, but um, yeah, to uh, further introduce myself, as Bree said, yeah, and as I said there in uh, my pipiha, um, I'm Ben Mai, um, and I'm the Network Partnerships Director at Christians Against Poverty, or CAP. How many of you guys have heard of CAP before? A few of you, yeah, a fair few of you, yeah, awesome, yeah, <laughs> and we're pointing some figures over here, great, love that, yeah, sweet. Hey, um, I've, I've been part of the CAP team for about seven years now, um, and uh, based here in uh, Tamaki Makoto. Um, and I am really uh, driven um, by a Bible verse, actually, that God really put on my heart when I was sort of a young fella, or about 18, quite a bit younger than I am now. And, um, and it was from Isaiah 58. I was like just reading my Bible once in the middle of the night, and I just felt God so like this, straight in here. It says in Isaiah 58, it says, If you spend yourself on behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, uh, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like the noonday sun. Uh, the Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land um, and will strengthen your frame. And I just felt like God had really, as I say, just kind of planted this verse in here. And I guess um, as I've kind of lived my life and so on, I've, you know, coming to CAP and working for CAP seven years ago, um, yeah, it's felt like a bit of an outworking of God really planting that verse in my life. Um, on a, on, a, on a person note, um, I mentioned um, Amy, uh, my wife, and um, you might have a picture here from our wedding day. Um, this is about six and a half years ago now, um, so Luke might have that one coming up uh, soon. So this is um, Amy, yeah, there she is, and, um, and, and here are our, here's three of our nephews uh, on our wedding day, so um, it's a bit of a mixed bag of emotions for them, seeing their auntie and uncle get married, but um, no, nah, it was a great fun day, and um, yeah, quite like that one, eh? Little Corbs and Ollie and uh, Lachlan there. And um, yeah, so, we're, so, so Amy actually happens to be, or sorry, she was, I should say, um, the CEO of Christians Against Poverty. So I married the boss, basically. Um, <laughs> she was the boss at work and the roles were reversed at home, you know, or at least that's what I tend to tell myself. But um, uh, Amy, Amy actually stood down and uh, just before Christmas um, to focus on, yeah, trying to start a family, which is something that we're keen to do. So um, yeah, so she's hanging out and I'm no longer married to the boss, so there we go. Um, yeah, so a little bit about Christians Against Poverty. We work in partnership with local churches across Aotearoa um, to really help um, families and whānau and individuals um, in financial situations, um, particularly those who are um, struggling in unmanageable debt through the CAP Debt Help Service and also through the CAP Money Service, um, which is all about helping people to budget and spend and save and get, in, get in control of your finances rather than your finances controlling you. And in actual fact, um, you guys are actually running the CAP Money course here at Gracegate, and uh, I think Rob's uh, here today, Rob Upton, yep, Oh, yeah. oh, there he is on the camera there. So um, Rob is actually starting a cap money course this Monday night at 7 p.m. here. So keep that in your mind, put that in your diaries, and um, we'll be talking a little bit more about cap money as we go on. Awesome. So really, what I, I just want to do today is... I guess a sense off, off the back of that verse, really, that Isaiah 58 verse, you know, it talks about the hungry and the oppressed. And I guess what I've come to realize is that here in Aotearoa, uh, here on the North Shore, there are many hungry and oppressed people, uh, both physically and spiritually. And I guess I firmly believe that this, um, this oppression, if you like, is something that only Jesus can fully restore. And that the church that's you guys, are uh, his hands and feet, called to do life together and kind of serve people in our communities. 
And so I'll tell you a couple of stories today of courageous people who have been helped by the local church and by CAP. Stories of the church reaching people in transformational ways. And coming back to the, um, to the little uh, role play there, the little production, um, in Jesus' time, uh, Jericho was an oasis. It was situated near the Jordan River, and it was a wealthy, it was a, it was a busy city. And the road between uh, Jerusalem and Jericho it's probably looked a bit like this. It was 15 k's long, down a big hill, through dry desert land. It was known amongst the locals as the Way of Blood. And so, you know, if you had to return uh, from Jericho back up to Jerusalem, you'd be thinking about the need to protect yourself. Um, you'd be thinking about staying in groups. You'd be thinking about um, coming to narrow passes and wanting to make sure that you're not in any real danger as you go through. But imagine as you're on this road and you see um, a heap um, slumped on the side of the road. And up ahead, as we saw here, a holy man, a priest, moves out of his way to avoid the body. Behind him, as we saw, the Levite was up next. And the Levite takes a closer look, but steps over the man and continues quickly on. And so Jesus doesn't say why those two people didn't stop. They might have been um, in a hurry. They might not have wanted to become kind of ritually unclean by touching someone who was left for dead. Um, but it might have also been a sense of wanting to protect themselves as well, you know. Stopping here meant risking your own life because robbers could be sitting in the shadows and waiting to ambush their next victim. And then, of course, we see the third person come along, a Samaritan considered an enemy to the Jews, someone that the Jews really despised. And we see, of course, as we heard in the story, that the Samaritan was moved by compassion for this Jewish man who'd been stripped, who'd been beaten, who'd been robbed of all his clothes, and who'd been left for dead. And I guess as we watch that uh, story there, we can really hone in on the Samaritan's extravagant care for the man. You know, at danger to himself, or danger to herself, kneels down to take care of the man's immediate physical needs, and then enters into the man's pain and suffering and brings a healing touch. And so the Samaritan cleansed the man's wounds, bandaged him up, put his own cloak around him, loads onto the donkey, and finds the nearest place to rest on this dangerous road. And so the, 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 the man was given two days' wages, he's fed and cared for, and the Samaritan promises to cover all further costs of recovery. And really, by, by responding as the Samaritan did, um, she uh, saved the man's life. And so, yeah, this powerful story, Jesus finishes with that really, really powerful question. And who is being a neighbor to this man? Was it the Levite or the holy man? No, it was the one who showed him mercy, the one who showed him compassion. And so the reality is poverty robs people. Poverty strips people of dignity, it rips them out of community, and there are families, there are individuals uh, right here in this community, here across the North Shore, who have been really left on the roadside of Aotearoa, you know, battered and beaten down by poverty, often caused by debt or generational cycles that seem impossible to break. And often, in some cases, these people might be out of sight or out of mind. We might even assume that they're okay. It's people like Kath and Malo. Kath and Malo put on a brave face when they went to work, uh, yet they struggled to feed their kids, five kids, on about $60 a week for food. And so for Kath and Malo, home became a place of resentment and anger. Emma another cat client who was struggling to find work. Uh, she was living in a garage with her son, no one to turn to for help, and she felt like a failure and a bad mum. It's Sia, a beautiful woman, trapped in an endless cycle of debt and repayments and creditors' phone calls, wondering if life was even worth living. I guess their situations look something like this. You know, imagine after paying all of your bills, you have just $60 a week for food. You know, that's $8.50 a day 
to feed your family of five kids, in Kath and Marlowe's case. And so this is the amount that many CAP clients are trying to survive on when they make that first call for help. But you know what happens if one of the kids gets sick and the prescription costs $15? It's a cold week. You want to put the heater on a little longer, you know? And so you have to choose between feeding your children and keeping the home warm. And so you skip a meal and soon that becomes your regular pattern. In fact, CAP clients tell us um, that that was the norm, that two out of three uh, skip meals on a regular basis. And so, you know, it's absolutely nothing there for basics like car maintenance or school clothes and shoes or school fees. And so you do what would be natural or you do what would be the right thing to do or the seemingly obvious solution in that situation. You choose to borrow, to put a little extra food on the table, to fix your car so that you can get to work but the interest compounds quickly and the repayments make the days and the weeks seem even harder. You're tired, you're hungry, you're losing your temper, you fight more, and your sense of belonging shifts and you withdraw from people. So if you don't have money for petrol or you know, for the car, you can't bring a dish to a family party and so you stay home and you stay hidden away. And so I guess over time, your identity becomes shaped by a feeling of loneliness and a feeling of failure and a feeling of helplessness and fear and perhaps even depression. You know, there's a social stigma that says you're not trying hard enough. In fact, it's hard to hear, but one in four CAP clients have told us that they've considered or attempted suicide um, because of their debt situation. One client said this, he said, it's the stuff that breaks you. If we come back a few chapters from, uh, from the uh, Luke uh, chapter 10, the parable of the Good Samaritan, we can look at Luke chapter 4. And uh, we've got that up. I think we've actually got it up because it's replicated in Isaiah. So, um, so here we see in uh, Isaiah 61, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me. Uh, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. This is Jesus speaking up in the synagogue on the Sabbath, and here's what he says at the start of his kind of ministry time. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Awesome. This is Jesus standing up. He's saying, this is who I am, and this is why I'm here. I'm here with good news for the poor. I'm here to bind up wounds. I'm here to heal broken hearts. I'm here to set prisoners free. And so his very actions were always moved and guided by compassion. And we saw that in the story of the Good Samaritan. His heart was turned towards the lost and the hungry and the poor. And he came and he gave his life and he rose again to release people bound by pain and hopelessness into a life of freedom and joy. And more than that, he calls his church, he empowers each one of us in here to enter into people's pain, to respond with compassion and to bring his freedom and transformation. And so that's what the church is about. That's what you guys are about. I sense that as I come in here this morning, and this is also where CAP comes in. And so over 13 years now, going back to 2008, CAP has partnered with hundreds of local churches throughout Aotearoa, really acting as a bridge into the community, helping people love their neighbours who have been left on the roadside of Aotearoa. In 2008, we began with CAP Debt Help, and this is the help that Kath and Malo and Emma and Sia all received. And there's a team of people from local churches who visit clients in their own home once they've made that first call for help. They get to know families, they get to take care of those immediate practical needs like filling empty cupboards with food. They pray with families, they get to say, you're a good mum, you're a great dad, you're doing an amazing job. And then they gather all of the debts and the bills and they send them to CAP Head Office where the team advocate on behalf of around 600 client families every day. I've got two of the team here with me this morning, Elisa and Margaret. Great to have you guys here with us. 
And so the team negotiate with creditors to get interest and payments lowered. They build livable budgets so that clients can begin paying back their debt at a rate that they can afford. And then together with the local church at that grassroots level, with support from the CAT team in the head office, families, individuals, Fano start working on their maybe two-year, three-year journey out of debt, being supported by the local church throughout that time. You know, getting around people, inviting them to church, fixing the car, babysitting the kids, really wrapping up families in support and love. So that's CAP debt help. CAP money. This is Robin, Monday night. Don't miss out. CAP money, it's going to be great. This is a, a, a two or a three or a four session money management course. And it's really around anyone who wants a better understanding of their finances. And so the course, of course, is run in like a group setting where people can support and encourage one another. Before Amy and I got married, we did some pre-marriage counselling. And uh, we each had to fill in a, a survey um, by ourselves. And it kind of said, okay, how compatible are you in 12 different areas? And so Amy comes from this accounting background. I come from an economics background. We both work for CAP. I'd say we're reasonably good at managing our money. But in these 12 areas, the area we were least compatible in was money management. The area we were least compatible in. So despite our kind of qualifications or backgrounds, um, this is a challenging area, you know, in a relationship and a marriage. It's kind of just how it is. And so for me, I love the transparency that the cat money system has given us. You know, knowing what's going where has been a really great starting point for us to have really healthy and constructive conversations um, around finances. And so over the past 10 years, more than 15,000 people have completed cap money um, and learning to budget wisely and really save and plan well uh, for their future. And so I guess both of these services working in partnership with church, something that I love about both of them is the sense of hope that is provided. And you know, hope, hope is powerful. Hope is a powerful thing. You know, coming back to cap debt help, hope doesn't start the day that someone goes debt free after kind of two or three years. It actually starts with a prayer when someone first calls into cap. You know, it starts with someone showing up and saying, we're here to help. You're not alone anymore. It starts with the knowledge that people have value, that there is a God who loves them and has so much more for them. So we're going to watch in a minute a video, um, a story really, a story of transformation and hope. But um, before uh, Luke chucks that on, I um, just want to mention this book as well. This book's called Nevertheless, and um, it's written by the guy that founded CAP. His name's John Kirkby. Um, he's from Yorkshire in the UK. And um, it's the story of um, his kind of life, really. Went from kind of total financial ruin, his marriage had split up, he was living on one bedroom bed sit with his two daughters on a mattress, and he found God in that setting. And with the help of, his, of a pastor from a local church, he kind of came into the church. A few years later, he had this vision for this thing called Christians Against Poverty. And uh, this is his story of the early days of Christians Against Poverty. And um, you're welcome to grab a copy. We've got some on the table out by the coffee stand there. Um, you've got a form on your seat. And all you need to do to grab a copy is just like fill in a name, maybe an address and a mobile number. Come grab a, uh, come give that to me or Elisa or Margaret afterwards. And um, yeah, we'll give you a copy of Nevertheless to take away. Awesome. Yeah, they are a beautiful uh, family. I met Sia, yeah, a couple of years ago, um, and didn't know her prior to, um, you know, kind of coming to CAF and so on. But man, she I watched that video, and I just get the sense of transformation from meeting her. And yeah, just amazing, eh? Um, yeah, God is a God who loves to restore our hearts and restore our lives, and actually pick us up and take us out of the miry clay. And um, yeah, we praise Him for that, eh? Yeah, we remember Kath and Molo, uh, who I mentioned earlier. Uh, well, they actually went debt-free back in 2014. And uh, now they're actually both uh, working for CAP and helping other families um, journey out of debt. And um, I said earlier that their place, uh, home was a, a place of resentment and anger. Uh, they now say it's a place of laughter and kōrero and freedom and joy. 
And Emma, uh, Emma was living in a garage with her son. She went debt-free in 2015. Uh, since then, she's got him married. Uh, she's found a great job, and she's teaching her son uh, the principles that she learned through CAP. Three stories of three precious families who have been helped. And yeah, it's over the past kind of 13 years that CAP has been working with churches in Aotearoa. And over that time, there's been um, about $83 million worth of bills and debts have been either repaid by clients um, or totally written off. And uh, 1,902 people have gone completely debt-free, which is cool, eh? CAP doesn't pay a dollar along the way. It's the clients who do the hard work. Um, and I get particularly excited where, just like Sia, uh, 1,336 people have said yes to Jesus and are growing in a relationship with Jesus. And so every day, people are being set free from the bondage of debt and poverty and stepping into a life filled with freedom and joy. And this is the power of the church. This is you and me giving our time, giving our resources, giving our extravagant compassion uh, to those who need it most. So how, how, how can you respond today? I just, just want to encourage you that if you've uh, seen yourself in the story of Sia or Kath and Malo or in Emma, uh, if you're struggling, please come and chat with me or Elisa or Margaret after the service. I can grab a brochure. Um, you can jump onto the website, capnz.org. Uh, Cap's help is completely free and there is hope for you in your situation. Again, if you uh, know friends or neighbours or work colleagues or whanau who might need help, as you've seen it here, again, come and grab some brochures and we can have a chat. As I mentioned, if you want to uh, jump on the Cap Money course on Monday night with Robin, uh, get in there. It'll be great. I think we're going Mondays, Mondays, maybe for either two or three weeks, but it's for the next two or three weeks on Monday nights at seven o'clock. And really encourage you to come along there, tell Robin you're coming, or just jump in on the day. Um, that'll be a great course. The other thing to mention is that um, if you are, are in a position and wanting to give financially to the work of CAP, uh, would love to give you that opportunity today to, again, kind of sustain the ministry, sustain the movement, and create the kind of lasting, sustainable change that you've seen there in Sia and Kath and Malo and in Emma. You know, next week, about probably 50 or 60 brave people are going to make that first call for help. They'll want to begin their journey out of debt. They'll, their mums and dads who are living in some pretty desperate situations. And so it might be $5 a week. It might be a dollar a week. It might be $20 a month. That can make a life-changing difference. And you'll join with an army of almost 4,000 people across Aotearoa who are giving what they can on a regular basis. If you're interested in doing that, I'd just say ensure that you're giving generously to your church first before you consider that. But if you are interested in giving, you can tick and sign the form here. Fill out your bank details if you know them. If not, sweet as. And you can also bring that form um, up to the back and um, we, we'll get in touch in the week to come as well. Awesome, guys. Thank you uh, so, so much. As I draw to a close, I... Yeah, I just, I'm just really encouraged um, by being here this morning. I was just thinking, even completely independently of what I've been speaking about, that, um, yeah, that it's just, just really, really good and just really filled my heart in being here this morning. So I just want to thank you and really encourage you for your uh, warmth and your hospitality in having me. Yeah, loved the worship time. Um, and um, yeah, loved just kind of chatting and having a coffee. And I look forward again to doing that after the service, eh? Um, awesome, guys. How about I um, pray, and then I think we're going to go into a song. Yeah. Father God, we thank you that, um, that in your son, Jesus, um, there is a representation of your holiness, and that is really characterized by a person who is compassionate, who has unending grace and mercy and love. And we thank you that that grace and mercy and love is freely available to us this morning. And we thank you for your son, Jesus, for dying on the cross for us 
and making that freely available for us. We praise you for that this morning. We thank you also for your heart for the poor, for your compassionate heart for all of us and for those in need in particular. And we pray this morning, Lord, that our hearts have been stirred. Maybe they'll be stirred as we go away and reflect and we think about how we can respond. We pray, Father God, for each of us that you give us hearts, give us deeper hearts to reach out to those around us, to show compassion, to really mirror your love for those around us. We pray for opportunities for that. And we pray for real spirits of generosity in our own heart as we give out love to those around us. I pray blessing upon Gracegate Church. I pray blessing upon each person and family and Fano represented here today. We thank you, God, for your goodness. We thank you for your provision. And we place you at the center of this church and the center of our lives. Thank you, Father God. Amen.